Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code get100. That's code get100 at prizepicks.com slash get100. For a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100. And use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Neverland is brought to you by mypodcastreviews.com. Check our affiliate link right there in the show notes or on our website to go and join an account. If you happen to have a podcast and you want to see your reviews you get from around the world, from every different possible place that someone could be listening and reviewing your podcast, you need to create an account. It's very inexpensive, very affordable. Mypodcastreviews.com. They'll even help you create a link where people can review your podcast very easily that you can put right into your show notes. Once again, mypodcastreviews.com. The following production is part of the We Be Geeks Podcast Collective. All this has happened before. Hey kids, Townsend Coleman here, the voice of Michelangelo from the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Tom Kane, this is the voice of Yoda on Star Wars. Hey yo, it's Woke Bad, and a big yee-haw to you all. I used to be Luke too. Hi, my name is Oli Shoshan. I play Jedi Master Shakti. Hi, Butch Patrick here, Eddie Munster. Hi, this is Jim. Hi, this is Bill Farmer. You're listening to the Neverland Podcast. Welcome to Neverland, to Disney and beyond. And it will all happen again. And now your head lost boy, the Spider Pan. Walk on the eyes of East Pan. Jeremy. Take that pixie out of your pockets, Neverlanders, and sprinkle some pixie dust around. Think that happiest thought. Now let's fly away to Neverland. And I tell you what, it's doing these every two weeks. As uh, it's been very weird. I think I've gotten used to it, though. I don't know if you know. I would like to go back to weekly format, but doing it every two weeks, it's uh, it's taking a lot of pressure off of things because uh, I've been very busy lately, and I'll have to tell you some of the fun things going on. But we're not alone because we don't fly to Neverland alone. Always fly with a buddy. Hi there, we got Pastor Hello Phil. There. Well, of course, we call you Lost Boy around here. I was calling you Pastor Phil. Ah, uh, well, that's what you're used to. <laughs> that's what I'm used to. So, uh, we've got a lot of fun things because I don't know if you heard there was like this whole thing about the, I don't know, some sort of Justice League oh, movie I've heard thing. About yeah. that. Some little thing. And there's also exciting news and also some new, one new show that has launched already on Disney Plus. I'm going to talk about, that's right, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which I watched and you haven't seen. I've not got to see you. Like, I'm looking forward to it. That's keeping me from making sure I don't spoil anything as I talk about my thoughts on the first episode. Well, I'm going to watch it when I get home. I yeah, you. well, maybe we should have sat and watched it here. I don't know. I don't know if I have that kind of time, though, oh, really. It's okay. But I have been super busy. Of work, and, you know, I've, been, I've, I've completed all my video training to uh, start doing some of this wedding, wedding videography. Hopefully I'll get started and doing some weddings very soon because, boy, do I need that other money. Maybe Mickey and Minnie will finally tie the knot. Yeah, and oh, I'll get boy. to go film the wedding. That'd be, be awesome. Great. But here's one of the reasons, and I, I'm, I was even telling Philip that I was going to have to tell on this right here. 
because I have a platform. I've been having problems with my 2016 Ford Focus here, and it's been going on for a while. You've been in the car even when it's acted up and some of the stuff going on. Yeah. It pretty much broke down uh, on my way over to church on Sunday, and I had to kind of leave it in the church parking lot. I overheated the transmission because the transmission seemed like it wasn't wanting to shift. It was slow to shift. After towing it to one spot and getting it looked at in one shop, they basically tied it down to you know an error code and connected it to there was an extended warranty that Ford had put out for 2016 and some other years of a Ford Focus because the transmission is bad. And they they told me that it's hard to replace the transmission for these because people are there's so many people having to replace them that it could be April or May if I needed to replace the entire transmission oh, before before we even get it in. He even the, this mechanic he he doesn't have his transmission technician anymore, and he called two of the guys he knows that he says are some of the best in the area, and neither one of them would want to take in a 2016 Ford Focus because they know the transmission is bad. And it says no, no, we don't even touch those; they're so bad, we can't fix them. You're gonna have to go to a dealer. Now, of course, when I go to the dealer, they look at my VIN number and they're saying, "Oh, well, there's no recalls or extra warranties on a transmission for your car." And they said, "Oh, I'd have to talk to Ford directly, which I'm going to do as soon as they give me the phone number to talk to them." <laughs> uh, you better believe it. Uh, so right now, I've had to leave my car with Ford, and I'm still waiting to hear back on how bad the damage is going to be. But most likely, my tax refund, even my stimulus, is probably all gone just to repair my car. I'm going to need that extra income. So. Although I did send to uh, the market manager over where I'm at, because uh, I have been doing these other shows that I don't get paid for. I'm like, I would like to do a version that I do get paid for, but maybe I can get some extra show time, which would get me a, maybe a couple extra hours maybe to, to set the show up and put it in. So we're going to see. I need to sit and talk with them, and we'll see. You know, I, I did send them some samples, so I, I hope he likes them and thinks this is a good idea, because that would be great. If, oh. he, if, he, if he's on board with me, it'd be awesome. Hope and I so. know he listens to the show. So so come on, man. We need to talk. Let's go. Let's get going, man. So, uh, so but yeah, that's, I do have some hopes of some exciting things maybe could happen, you know, where I have some time over the weekends to film some weddings and maybe do some extra show and some extra hours. Because, you know, radio is where I feel my future is. Sure. As people have talked about, I have I, I have a full-time job to supplement my writing habit. That's what a lot of novelists will say. Sure. Well, I supplement my radio habit because I want to do the radio thing. But I got to I gotta do the wedding video stuff to make sure that I can keep ends meet going. So. I understand that. So we got to get it rolling. Anything fun happening to you this week? You got a PS5. I got a PS5. Yeah. That was, that was almost just a, uh, out of my mind. We didn't know that we could do such a thing. And I was able to go to Vintage Stock at the last second and get one and... I've been having a good time with that. I don't. I haven't got to play as much as I like, but I have got to play it. And it's been a lot of fun. I'm, I spent some time going to a Call of Duty last night. Oh yeah, we had some fun with that. Yeah, one. Yeah, I was in Vietnam last night, and uh, that was fun. And I, I was, really, did, did Fort Gump have to pull you out of anything? Well, no. I was. It was a nineteen. It's very interesting game because it's Cold War, and I spent spent uh, some time in nineteen sixty seven, and you go back into the eighties a little bit, and uh, it's like you're doing a lot of memory. But the the scene that I have played so far, because I'm in the story part right now. You get to this part where they have uh, Ronald Reagan, and it's amazing because whoever they got to do the voice, spot on. And Maybe it was Rich Little. Uh, oh, <laughs> man, that would be great. Because Rich Little was just like was spot on Well, the, the, the graphics are so amazing for the PS5. <laughs> I, I, I had a young man the, the other day over uh, who's a, a nephew of mine, and he has the, the Cold War for the PS4, which is good too, by the way. But he said that the graphics are even better for PS5, of course. But yeah. he said that it blew him away just to see the game. Uh, he said that he didn't think it could look any better or sound any better. But what shocked me when I was first playing it is that the sound was coming also, not just from the game system itself, I mean to say from the TV, but also from your, your controller. Yeah. Which the PS4 can do as well. You, yeah. do, you get certain sounds. But not well, near like, especially as... Especially if you're holding something in hand. But it's stuff. a little spooky sometimes because I'll be, I was there late at night sometimes. Suddenly I'd, I'd hear, we're coming to get you. And, I'll, and I'm like, whoa, what? And yeah. then all of a sudden... The uh, controller also has different vibrations. Like Oh, yes. The yeah. dual sense is amazing. It is. Like, the trigger is a little harder to hit uh, depending on what gun you have. So, like, the trigger, if you have certain guns... You, I didn't really notice yeah, that. Wow. Yeah. If you have some guns, the trigger you, you hit is very easy. And the other times, it's a little harder because it's, you know, a lot more... Kind of feel like the different guns. Yeah. Although, what I thought was amazing was... Because I was playing, you know, I was playing with this... Your, your nephew was killing me, man. Yeah. Little dude's awesome. He's got good aim. But, like, when you pull the trigger, you could feel the trigger vibrate. Oh, yeah. The, like, the individual... There's... Because we're used to, like, on a PlayStation, you'd have, like, a one big, like, the original ones that had a smaller vibration in one and a bigger vibration in the other, yeah. and, and it would do stuff. But 
Now it's like they've got so many different things to cause vibration that like every little bit of that thing feels differently, and it's so immersive. Yeah, I, I mean, but like pull it because I could feel every bullet leave that that, that controller. You know, it's like there's so many different types of vibration, types of sounds, types of you know. It was I don't know. It just shocked me. And it's so cool. I'm not going to say it's the the only cool thing about the PS5, but that controller by itself is it's amazing. pretty amazing. And, and I knew there was something up when when we booted up and we fired up the second controller, and it had to do a software update for the controller. Yeah, the controller itself had software. <laughs> I was like, what are you saying to me? This is amazing. So, oh golly. But when we started, especially, you know, I was testing out the, uh, oh, the little robot guy where they have a whole little thing to play with and little obstacles. Yeah, I can't remember and the name. Like, Android something. Uh, he's, yeah, but he's got like Mario style platforming he can do. But every little tap of his steps, I felt like perfect little feet on the, oh my gosh, it was, it's amazing what, yeah. they, what this technology is. I mean, I we to, grew up on an Atari. I mean, you know, what's the world? And I used to think that, talking about every time they would go up a little further, Nintendo, to Sega, to, to Nintendo, whatever, Super Nintendo, I used to think there was no way it's going to get like, better. How could they get better than this? And my imagination, and I got a big imagination. Yeah. I never thought it could get better, but boy, it is. It just keeps getting I'm better. I'm still waiting for my holodeck. I oh, want a Star Trek holodeck. Me too. Heck yes. I mean, when I used to see that on Star Trek The Next Generation... I used to think there's just no way, but man, I'm telling you, I, maybe I can see it. Maybe what you know, we probably do it with a VR thing on our heads, yeah. you know? Because who's to say it, it could very well happen in our lifetime? Maybe yeah. not. But and it's even VR tech has now gotten so much to where I've heard of people actually getting kind of a motion sickness because their their eyes are sending signals to their brain that they're moving around, but yeah. their body's not going, and so it, you know, it's the same thing with like when you when you fall asleep in a car or whatever. I guess. Yeah. Or you're reading something, equilibrium or whatever is sending you. It's it's we're in motion, but your eyes aren't saying that there's motion. I don't know so if I personally can do it because of all the seizures and things that I. I, I have to be careful. Yeah, but there are options apparently with VR that you could either be, you know, use a controller to move around, or you could actually have your character just hop to things to try. If you're worried about having getting a motion sickness type of thing, that you could just hop to pl- from place to place. So, but once we get to, I mean, when you consider there's also. Um, uh, I think it's called AR or it's advanced reality or something like that. But where you actually have, and they established some of this over at Disney, but you have a, where the room is built up and you have like where they'll have walls and things, but then they'll put this goggle and headset and a pack on you. And they've had a Star Wars thing set up yeah, at this I've place, that, yeah. but you can you're literally walking around, but you're walking in this environment and, and everywhere you look is where you look. Your gun is your gun. I mean, it's a complete environment. It's augmented reality. That's the word yes, I was looking for. Yes. But they've got an augmented reality where it's like this complete thing, and you can play a story as you completely play as your character. That's, I mean, we're, we're, the holodeck is coming. I remember back in 1994, I want to say. Uh, yeah, I wanted, we went to this place. It was all out there, uh, not too far from here in Independence or something like that. Maybe it was Kansas. Anyhow, went to a place where they had. Um, Oh, a reality type thing. It was computer reality. Anyhow, we went out there, uh, my cousins and I, and we you had to pay money to get into this little thing where you put a, a deal on your head, a visor on your head. Mm-hmm. And that was a way above and beyond, you know, doing at the time. You're like, oh, wow, this is so above reality. I can't believe we could do this. But you look like basically these um, blocks, <laughs> you, <laughs> these computer blocks, and, you know, you didn't look real whatsoever. Man, now you can go far now, beyond that on your 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 phone, let alone. Yeah, it's my goodness. Virtual reality is what it's, I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, heck, I remember you know, Worlds of Fun, a local theme park, had what yes. was supposed to be a virtual reality, and I was I thought it was going to be wow, this should be amazing, and I felt like I was basically playing Doom with a visor on. Yeah, it, didn't, it didn't matter it. which direction I looked; I just had a controller to go over, and it was just kind of neat. It was all right in front of my eyes. And I was like, well, this, is this it? The world has changed. Virtual reality is much more a virtual reality now. I feel like we're living in Tron. We are. Oh, golly. Woo, dude, that's a little scary of a thought, though, because, you know. <laughs> David Warner. The master computer <laughs> is coming. End of line. So, <laughs> speaking of which, I actually, I, I finally picked up a Sark figure. I, I was going to tell you that earlier, because you're talking about this Macho Man um, uh, Re- Masters of the Universe type figure where the package was open. I actually, I re- didn't realize that I'd gotten it out of the store. The Sark figure, the plastic of the uh, of the box, has actually been pushed in a little bit. So it's, it's it's I've got it displayed in the box with uh, with Tron and Flynn, but 
Uh, but yeah, it's not it's not here. It's downstairs. Oh, he has one. He's looking around my studio, like no, I've got it downstairs where the other figures are. I don't have room to put any more figures over here, man. Well, I don't know. find room. <laughs> uh, I ain't got room, and now I ain't, I ain't gonna have money, man. Especially. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot to mention coming up later on the show, Lost Boy Eric went to. I, and I, I, it was kind of an accidental thing. He didn't intend to be there, but he was kind of laid over in Philadelphia. Or not Philadelphia, but Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is the state. But he got the chance to go to the Hershey plant. Yes. And he has sent us some audio uh, that I will share with you uh, here later on in the show. Uh, probably before we get into um, uh, our movie review. Because we do have a movie review. Also a television review, as mentioned. Uh, but while we're in the uh, what I call the host chatter... All right, I have not been able to confirm this, but I wanted to bring it up. I was seeing this pop up on Facebook, but no one, it was it was coming from sites where it wasn't really, you know, like an official word, but I'm just imagining the possibilities. So it's saying, and it, it was listed as being April 2nd because they didn't want anybody to think April 1st. Oh, fool. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I don't know if this is really happening, but we're talking the Gendy Tartakovsky Clone Wars. Ah, uh, droids, Ewoks. Ah, uh, even those two Ewok television movies I are supposed that. to maybe be coming to Disney Plus. I would love that. Now, I don't usually like to report on rumors, but this is just so exciting because I mean, I I I didn't really like the droid cartoon, but I love that Ewoks cartoon. Me too. I love that. I actually, uh, I actually uh, was almost uh, the opposite. Ewoks. No, you're wrong. I like the Ewok, but I I used to watch the droid partially because I had some of the toys. Of it. <laughs> yeah, I still have one or two. Or maybe, who knows how. I think what threw me is I'd only seen the first movie at that point, and I was like, where's Luke? Where's where's, where's everybody else? Who's this people that, that C-3PO and R2-D2 are going around with? What's going on here? So the uh, As far as the the uh, movies, the Ewok movies, I enjoyed those. I watched them so many times. My grandmother, who was just the greatest lady, you know, she, uh, she recorded them. Anytime she saw something that us kids were going to like, she would record them. And any time we'd come over, she'd put them on and play them again and again. <laughs> and and the Ewoks was one of them. And so we watched that first one a million what, times. Caravan of Courage Caravan and Ewok Courage. Adventure. And Ewok yeah. Adventures was the second one I actually liked better. Because it had this actor who I adored, Wilford, Wilford Brimley. Brimley. Yeah. And I didn't know much about him, him at the time. Him diabetes. Yeah, I didn't know much about him at the time. But he was such a good actor yeah. that everything he was in, he would capture. I mean, everything. Whether it be a small part cocoon. Uh, or whatever. Well, he was a pretty good size. Oh, yeah, really. by then. I mean, but yeah. what I mean is it wouldn't have mattered if it was an yeah. a, a oatmeal commercial <laughs> or or whatever. He but was girl, so good. He was just yeah. so good. And we just lost him, I guess, has it been two yeah, months? A couple two months, months ago. three months? Yeah, it hasn't been that long few, ago. A few months ago. I love him. He was great in Seinfeld. He didn't have a huge role, but he was great in there. He was he's a post office man. Oh, good. Post office master. And he would get in there and he'd threaten Kramer. <laughs> and he was so hilarious that because Kramer decided he no longer wanted the uh, uh, mail, and he threatened Kramer and made Kramer take it back again. And, be, and he, he goes, he goes, you will take your mail because by gosh, I'm proud of it. And, and <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was awesome. Well, I get to see Newman showing up in that too. Though. Oh, he was there. Of course, he'd have he, to be Newman in there. He was there. You he, are interfering with he, a postal worker. He was, and he had a uh, Newman had basically done wrong, and so he had a bucket on Newman's head, and it was, <laughs> it was great. Oh goodness, was, you gotta watch it. Oh goodness. Uh, so yeah, I'm not saying that this is happening, but I'm saying if it does, I'm gonna be excited. Oh, I was because that was also at the time of the uh, the droid cereal. Remember the Star Wars? Yes, C three PO. C three PO. I never got to eat those. Oh, did you not? Never did. It was pretty great. You could get a mask of Luke Skywalker on the back. <laughs> oh yeah, cereal yeah. box masks. Yeah, oh yes, I loved them. <laughs> I thought they were great for Halloween. They even had. I think even with the. Uh, some of the re-releases they've done with Frankenberry and Count Chocula, I think they've put little masks on the back of oh, there yeah. so you can wear following. <laughs> Fun stuff, you know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, all right, so the next thing I have on the list of... All right, so, of course, we like to ask the question, what have you been playing? Of course, I guess we've heard about you've been playing Call of Duty. Mm. I have continued playing Breath of the Wild, which I think Eric would be proud of me that I've come back to it, and I've now... I think, let's see, last show, I don't think I'd beaten any of the uh, the Guardians. I've now beaten three Guardians. I'm on my way up to Death Mountain to do the fourth one. And then I'll, I'm going to probably stockpile a lot more uh, health that way before I go after Gan and I am prepared. Well, one other thing I have been playing, because it's it came with the game as well, uh, I was able to choose two games. I chose Call of Duty, Cold War, mm -hmm. and I chose the Spider-Man oh, game. Miles Morales, Miles Morales, which came with a remaster of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it came with the remaster of Spider-Man. 
They did change the face of Peter Parker, yep. but I, I got used to it. It took me a little while. I got well, used to it. I guess because you didn't play through the entire <laughs> PS4 game, it I, wouldn't be that hard. I pretty maybe. much did uh, with my nephews. I allowed them to do it. I was with them. But I got used to it. It grew on me. Uh, but that being said, I really like this new game. I haven't played a lot of it yet, but boy, it's good. It, it's yeah, that Miles Morales one was oh, cool. Oh, boy. So That's on my list when I get my PS5. I've got to get that one. And, you know, coming up pretty soon is Resident Evil Village, also known as Resident Evil 8, which the 25th anniversary of Resident Evil, actually, from the release in Japan, is, I think, let's see, it might have been yesterday. Which reminds me of something I want to get going. I downloaded for free, that's all. <laughs> what, what, one of those games. One, one, one of the Resident, Resident Evils, Evil? but I don't know which one. It's just, it what? might have been the demo. Is it Maiden? Something like that. I'm going to have to come over and play that because they're not putting that on PS4 for a demo at all. Well, you can come and take it. I've been wanting to play that one. <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm in a Resident <laughs> Evil junkie, okay? Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, and, in fact, so, all right, my uh, the YouTube channel, which some of you are subscribed to, uh, it's I'm not really obeying the algorithms of YouTube very well to get this channel to grow. And I have too much of a mixture of uh, uh, game footage. You know, of course, the podcast, uh, there's a video version of that goes up. That's pretty much you're going to look at one image and hear the audio. Uh, and then some other bits of video that I put on there. I need to separate that. I'm going to create a Neverland gaming channel as a branded channel. And I'm going to try to move all my game content over there and make new videos. And one thing I definitely want to do is I want to do a retrospective on the first time I played the very first Resident Evil game. And some fun stories that come from that. Uh, so I need to get some footage of the first game, which I do have. And I think I can... Uh, with an emulator, I think I can play play my disc on the uh, computer here and capture some footage. So uh, look for that. Come and check it out. When, I'll let you know when it is up and running. Uh, but yeah, I'm expanding the YouTube channel because I'm going to have to have one section that focuses on the gaming. Gaming. So maybe I can get an algorithm and we can have some fun with some more people. Now, the Neverland Gaming channel, normally I don't do like... Because, heck, we're going to talk about Justice League and I don't usually talk about R-rated movies on this show because that's that type of show this is. And normally with like the Neverland channel, I didn't want to play any mature rated games. But you know what? On Neverland Gaming, I'm going to play those mature rated games because I have a lot of them. <laughs> you know, no. So I will, I will be playing through on some of those. So uh, just to let you know, that is coming. I heard this on the radio with our syndicated show we have at the station. They were talking about this, so I went and I looked it up, and here it is, Psychology Today. Why you may want to stand like a superhero. Stand like a hero, and you might act like a hero, but there's a catch. Now, this was actually written up. Someone has a PhD and wrote this, because there was a study that uh, kind of stand in a kind of an open posture. Your limbs are kind of spread out of the way to take up more space, so your legs are apart. Kind of put your hands on your hip. You know, stick that chest out like Superman. Uh, this is, all right, so here's some researchers, uh, Dana Carney, Amy Cuddy, and Andy Yap. They wanted to know if this was actually good for you, if it's a high-power or low-power positions. And uh, basically, this helps release some uh, testosterone or other hormones, relieve stress with cortisol, it boosts your confidence. And basically, they're saying if you could stand like this for just a couple minutes every day, stand like superhero... I did one of my segments today when I was doing news I, today. I actually stood there in a superhero and I stood up with the microphone and I, I'm going to give my news in a superhero pose because I know my news it'll go for two minutes in the uh, in the um, six o'clock hour and I did and I you know it didn't make me feel pretty good you know it does something about standing that way and just getting uh, that Superman thing you feel you feel confident. And so, but it was amazing. But yeah, I, this is an article and it's on psychology today. You can, you can read this. This was published back in 2017. Uh, uh, what, what, wait, no, actually this was uh, July 14th, 2011, this one, but I have seen some articles in 2017, but y'all look this up. This is awesome. I'll tell you this. When I was able to exercise before the whole seizure thing took over and I intend to do it again, whether I have seizures or not, but while running, I would stick my chest out and my uh, arms would go to the side and while I would be running, I'd feel like Superman. I'd be listening to that music, the John Williams music I'm talking about. <laughs> and I'd run, and I, I swear, I felt so good, not just because I felt good about what I was doing. You know, I'll be honest, I hated the running. I hated the jogging. Yeah. I hated it. But yeah, it felt you don't so see good. joggers smiling when they jog, do you? <laughs> it made me, but it made me feel good inside. Yes. And that music, oh man, there's nothing like it. Yeah, emotional health is also important. Yes, it made me feel so good. And to this day, if I need a pick me up, I'll turn on some John Williams music 
And I tell you what, man, it, oh, nothing like it. There's just nothing like it. There you go. <laughs> and that's the thing. Next time I get some work, I want to have some better music. And I need to make a workout mix, and I get some rocky music. That's another stuff. one. There you go. Man, I tell you, you get gonna fly now together. when you're running, and you you're gonna feel it. I you're gonna fly. You know, I did. I ran up those Philadelphia stairs. You did. Some of that you stuff. did. <laughs> Heck yeah. So I thought that was interesting things that go on this week, but. Uh, Uh, We have some Disney Park news to dive into. Spanning the Disney and Geek Universe to bring you the best in comics, toys, movies, and entertainment. This is news from around Neverland. Now this, this is something that actually just popped out today. Design revealed, this is on the Disney Parks blog, design revealed for first ever Walt Disney World Resort license plate with 100% of proceeds benefiting Make-A-Wish. Now, oh, that's nice. I'm, these look to be a Florida plate. Yeah. And, you know, because, you know, states do have, like, very specific style. In fact, you know, here in Missouri, we're actually having a bicentennial celebration, so I have a bicentennial plate. Oh, that's cool. Which, oh, by the way, the Missouri State Fair is on, and they're going to have a bicentennial celebration. I've never been to the State Fair. I'd kind of like to go. That'd be nice. That's, that'll, that's coming up in August. We'll, we'll have to see about yeah, this. Yeah, that'd be neat. But, so, they, they've got the design up here. This begins October 1st of 2021, and Florida car owners can get this. And this is, I guess, it's, it's really neat. It's a dark blue. It has... This really kind of cool art design of the the Orlando Castle with a fifty in it mm, for the Cinderella's fifty year anniversary. Right? Yeah, the Cinderella Castle. Yeah, that I guess that's a better way to say it, isn't it? Yes, the Cinderella Castle. So uh, let's see. Uh, the interested drivers can purchase a presale voucher now for twenty five dollars plus applicable state administration fees exclusively through their local county tax collector's office, license plate agencies, DMVs across the state of Florida, or online through the Orange County tax collector's office. And this, of course, this, uh, they've had a long relationship with Make-A-Wish and kids getting to have their wishes to come to the parks. Uh, so this is a great opportunity. It's celebrating 50 years of, of the park and of Make-A-Wish kids coming to the park. So this is really, really cool. I just wish it was in more places than just Florida because I totally would get one. It's hard to believe it's been 50 years because I remember when it was a big deal that was 20, 20 years, and let alone then 25. And it seems, like, of- it seems like yesterday... It really seems like yesterday. Which reminds me, speaking of 20 years, and we're talking about the anniversary, I do still have my 20 Magical Years book, and I do have a portion we're going to read through later, uh, but I'll do it after we get through some of this news. But yes, I am prepared to read some more out of that book. Uh, so I, I kind of wonder, though, because I mean, here's the website right there. I wonder if they will allow outsiders to order the plate. I mean, I wouldn't put a, a, a license sticker on it, of course, because it's not legal for me to drive. But if I just wanted one to put on the wall, or you know, as, you a, as a decoration, one, I imagine. I wonder. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look. I am very curious about that. I think it would be kind of neat. Uh, there is some new things going on. Of course, we know about new characters and things coming to the Jungle Cruise. But uh, there's also on the Disney Parks blog they had the Daily News and Gnus, you know, G N U S, the Daily News. Uh, they had a conversation with Alberta Falls because they're, of course, they're bringing in more stuff about more characters and trying to make more things for the skippers to joke about. And they have basically, it's like a fake news article. So can you tell us a little about you? Certainly. My name is Alberta Falls and I am the owner, manager, bookkeeper, and head mechanic of the Jungle Navigation Company. You may have heard of our world famous cruises through the jungle, blah, blah, blah. And it's a very long, full article thing. Uh, I've got it as an image. You know what? I'm going to save this as a JPEG. I'm going to save. I'm going to take a look at this thing later. I'm saving it so I can read it later. There we go. Uh, but I thought this was kind of neat that they're, you know, with the expanding backstory, they're, you know, with adding new characters in there, they're actually uh, creating some things. That, of course, you can find on the Disney Parks blog if you would like to take a read and a gander of that. Now, something else. All right. You know, of course, April is, um, and I think Arbor Day is even in April. But April is kind of the Earth Month, right? Mm-hmm. Well, of course, Disney's Animal Kingdom has got to throw down for Earth Month. And I, from April 18th to 24th, Disney's Animal Kingdom will host limited time experiences, including unique Disney character appearances, fun learning opportunities, special merchandise, themed food and beverage, a new wilderness explorer activity, and more. And I found this list on the park's blog here. The animation experience at Conservation Station will show how Disney artists bring favorite characters to life by using animals for inspiration. 
That's cute. Which is, yeah, that's really fun. I mean, if you've seen any, like, the old photos when they're working on Bambi and they had a little fawn so they could yes. draw them. And even, I remember a behind the scenes of The Lion King. Yes, they uh, Well, they had Robert Guillaume, because uh, <laughs> he was Rafiki. He was in there hosting it. I remember I recorded that special. Before I got to see that movie, I watched that special over and over on a VCR tape. My goodness. Yes. But it showed how they were getting lions in there, and the animals got to draw the lions, and they'd have all these different animals, and the animators getting to draw them, and as reference. They even had a... Uh, they had the uh, what's the name of that kind of a monkey that they had for uh, the baboon? That was yeah, or? baboon. That's right. And they had they even had the kinds of birds and things they bring them in. Yes, yeah. So I mean that's a very very neat. So uh, but the, the the rest of the description says for Earth Day celebration and the month of April you can learn how to draw characters including Dumbo, Turk, Squirt, Shere Khan, Simba, and Scar, whose real life counterparts represent amazing stories of conservation work around the globe. Uh, they also have a couple of really fun photos of like a, a couple of cupcakes. That's one's really cute. It's got bees and stuff on it, and little candy bees. And the other's got like a sea turtle with like gummies oh, that they made. Cute. That is adorable. Uh, and it, it says here, Nosh around the park sampling Earth Day Eats, including a selection of limited time specialty cupcakes, the Creature Comforts Honey Bee Cupcake, the Strawberry Flavored Flamingo Cupcake, ooh, at Flame Tree Barbecue, or the Sea Turtle Graham Cracker Cupcake, oh, plus the Crave the Wave Cocktail. At Restaurant Source Lounge, be sure to dig in as the treats are only available for a limited time. Oh, man. Especially when you talk about a strawberry cupcake. I am, I'm You're in. Going deep into that? Uh, it's strawberry, dude. I'm... <laughs> All right. For anyone, if I haven't told this story before, you, you ought to know this. Because my grandmother kind of half raised me. Yeah. She had a strawberry patch in her yeah, backyard. Sure and we used to go out all the time and pick strawberries and make them up and make stuff out of strawberries. So I adore strawberries. And it's springtime, especially when strawberries really start to... And it's spring now. Yeah, it is. It is. Spring is here. Spring is here. April and May is when they really start to come about. Yeah. So it's it's time for the strawberries. It's craving me some shortcake. And oh, it is, it is time. It is time. I'm going to want a strawberry shake when we leave here today. <laughs> say nay. Say nay. <laughs> say nay. I know. I really don't need it, but I want it. Uh, we were just talking about that earlier, too, but needs versus wants. Uh, anyway, set out in a series of self-guided nature-themed challenges and earn a special Wilderness Explorer Limited Time Earth Day Nature Badge. Also, it says hunt for an Earth Day 2021 Limited Edition Tafiti Moana Trading Pin. You can also support the Disney Conservation Fund by purchasing a cuddly plush inspired by species that call Disney's Animal Kingdom a home. Or check out Island Mercantile's eco-friendly water bottles, tumblers, and reusable bags that promote sustainability. I love those rhino pictures you just showed. Yeah, me. some great rhino pictures here on the Parks Vlog. There's a little baby rhino. That I think they that didn't they just have a baby rhino in there this year? I think that's what it is because uh, I think I remember they the the just this past year in 2020. I think they had there was a lot of babies. Um, and of course, it's a lot of this is they're talking about. There's uh, they have a oh, there it is. Yes, uh, let me read this then. Anytime you visit the park, marvel at unique animals and meet the newest arrivals. Most recently, the park welcomed the birth of Ranger, and you can get a glimpse of the rambunctious five month old white rhino calf and his crash on your journey aboard Kilimanjaro safaris. So there it is. And plus, keep an eye out for two young Maasai giraffe who were born just a few months ago. Oh, I love giraffes. I knew there was a bunch of animal births they had just had. So they're on the safari available to be. Oh man. I want to be able to go. I got a, <laughs> we got we got koalas here at the Kansas City Zoo again this year. Oh, good. Yes, we got to borrow the koalas. I'm gonna have to go back and see them. They're adorable. Uh, Disney Photo Pass service is of course going to be having some special in park Earth Day backgrounds and magic shots. We kind of expect that. Uh, and it says beginning April second, you can watch as artisans transform 40 tons of sand into a detailed sculpture and celebrating National Geographic's Secrets of the Whales, an original series streaming on Disney Plus on Earth Day. The intricate sculpted masterpiece will be located on the Discovery Island stage until April 30th. Every year on Earth Day, Disney has a new Disney nature film. I haven't heard what it is this year, but I'm sure it'll be on Disney+. Plus. Uh, I know Heather and I went to go see, um, I guess it was just called Penguins, uh, in the theater, and which you can watch on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, it is it that. is fun and hilarious. It's a great one. Just I'm not seeing that one yet. I've seen uh, it. It's, it's adorable. It's a, it's narrated by... Uh, I can't think of the actor's Danny name. No, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, <laughs> no, it's the guy who was on The Office. You know, hey, Nard Dog. You know, that guy. Um, oh, um... I can't think of the actor's name, but he narrates it. And he does oh, a good great, job of great, it. Great, great actor. Uh, but it basically follows the adventures of this one penguin. Of course, now Disney Nature tries; they make a story out of it. So you know, you're actually probably seeing footage of about ten different penguins, but they tell the story as if it's all the same penguin. You know, so uh, there should be something new coming up on Disney Plus. I'll have to look that up and see what it is because they always have a new Disney Nature film. 
Uh, but I haven't and heard Disney anything. himself, as you are, I'm sure, said this to me. Big in I, conservation. Yes, he was. Yeah, but he was also the one who started the whole, yes, the with whole uh, documentary. The Living thing. Desert. Yeah. The Living Desert. He's the one who modernized of what the nature documentary used to yeah. be. Oh, he would. You'd almost start to know those animals and yeah. start. Well, that's loving the idea. Them. Yeah, that's the idea. You love them. We appreciate them more when we know more about them. Yeah, that's why zoos are important. Yeah, absolutely, because we get to learn about the animal and we get to appreciate them, and then Otherwise, we respect them. What you don't know of, you, you almost you don't respect. Yeah. Them and you well, and back for it. years when people didn't understand, like they thought you know the the killer gorilla, and you even still see cartoons where they the killer gorilla. And yeah. there's even an Edgar Allan Poe mystery where it's a gorilla is actually what was the murderer. Even some of the Disney yeah. cartoon stuff. Yeah, because the... people didn't understand the animals. And, 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 and they was, were afraid I of them. I know it was supposed to be funny. Yeah. But still, you, because the name, you know. The Killer Gorilla is what I call it. Yeah. There's so many. Like, if you, even if you. I tried to read Swiss Family Robinson. But there was so much stuff they didn't understand about the animals that they had in there that was just it made it so ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, yeah this we didn't the movie people great. didn't get a chance. I haven't I haven't really watched the movie. Oh, is the that, movie's great. You gotta watch that. I've seen a little bit of it, and it's like, wow, the cheese is strong with this one. But that's still, you know, that was the days. But, yeah, but the movie is great. Yeah, but com- well, comparing that to Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, which is phenomenal, you gotta watch Swiss Family Robinson though. That's I will. I at some point, I really should. I know Heather watched and, it. And at those days, they also made. Uh, I know you don't like the ending, but I'm telling you. Old Yeller. Old Yeller. I'm not watching it. Uh, I'm not watching movie. it. No. Because even no, the ending no, no. is good. If I hated dogs, I'd probably be able to watch it, but I don't hate dogs. I love dogs, too. Yeah, but, so, but, but I'm like, no, no, they, I can't. I'm not. Not Spoiler <laughs> alert, they end with a dog. It ends with a good little dog. So, uh, oh. rela- related to Yeah, Old and Yeller. it also ends the dog. <laughs> no, it ends with a good dog. And, it, and it's Old Yeller's, Old Yeller's dog. So, okay. I'm telling yeah, you, it's but good. I was, uh, still, it's good. I know. It's good. It's I good. don't go to movies to cry for crying out loud, okay? <laughs> for crying out loud. <laughs> for crying out loud. I don't go to movies to cry. You like, I'm telling you. Uh, but, talking about things that are not going to make you cry, unless you cry for joy, April 30th. Disneyland, Disney Park, Disney California Adventure Park reopening Praise. April 30th. Yay, yay, yay. And hopefully some of you got a chance to do the Touch of Magic. I believe Window to the Magic, if you check out, if you listen to that podcast, Paul Berry was able to go to the Touch of Disney event. So there is some audio. I think he's released it this week. I haven't gotten to check it out. But I think he went there and checked it out. Uh, yeah, Philip, well, I, well, you just heard him squealing about is, yeah, they had a photo of the uh, Millennium Falcon out Anytime there. I see Millennium Galaxy. Falcon, I about go nuts. So, I yes, it is open. I don't really need to read the whole thing on the article. The important thing on this, April 30th, Disneyland will be back open. Yeah, the I'm world so is finally coming back yes. to some sort of normal. And part of the normal is that I can't afford to go. But I, one of these <laughs> days, one of these days, I will make my return. Mark my words. A dream is a... Wish your heart makes That's when right. you're fast asleep. Speaking of dreaming of things, okay, so Walt Disney World, the dream came to life. And this is from the, the 20 Magical Years. I want to read for you a little section. Now, I haven't mentioned this before it's primary photographs, but here's a Main Street, USA. It's a short little burb, and so I'm going to hop over and also read about Fantasyland. Now, those of you who listened to last week's episode, I read a little section, a little introduction. They gave you a little bit of history of Walt Disney World and even some Disneyland history. But I'll read for you now, and I quote, The first of the Magic Kingdom's six-themed lands, Main Street, USA, is a nostalgic tour of an enduring symbol of American life, a turn-of-the-century small town. Main Street gives us a tantalizing look at the best of the good old days. It is America between 1890 and 1910, when a burgeoning technology was replacing real horsepower with mechanical horsepower, and the telephone, telegraph, phonograph, radio, and cheap available hydroelectric power were revolutionizing daily life. The style was Curly Q's and gingerbread. <laughs> Every town, no matter how small, had its imposing city hall, usually fronted by a spacious plaza with a bandstand. Step with us into this exciting era of contrast. Welcome to Main Street, USA. I love Main Street, I USA. Love Main, I love being on the real one in Marceline as well. Yeah, yeah. I haven't gotten to go to Marceline in too long. Oh, Marceline. I'm hoping everything can go, oh, can't you be true? Oh, yes. <laughs> well, you know, all right, some of you know that little Richard song, Maybelline, right? Okay, I hope you do. All right, let me read you what it says about Fantasyland. So, reaching gracefully up to Florida's intense blue sky at the end of Main Street is Cinderella Castle, the entrance to the Magic Kingdom's most fanciful realm. This enchanting 180-foot-high landmark is an architectural blend of many European styles, from 13th-century French fortress to late Renaissance palace. Since it was inspired by no single structure, Cinderella Castle represents all castles. It is the solid yet dreamlike setting for countless childhood fantasies. 
In the castle courtyard stands a charming bronze statue of Cinderella, a heroine of the fairy tale that inspired the 1950 Disney animated classic film. And it is. Beyond the castle drawbridge is the land that Walt Disney called a timeless land of entertainment. This is Fantasyland, dedicated to all those children, young and old, yeah, old children right here, who believe that dreams really can come true. Here you can fly high with Dumbo or whirl in a spinning teacup, take a gallop on a mighty white merry-go-round steed, or careen with Mr. Toad, not anymore, down the road to nowhere in yep. particular. Oh, poo. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that know, yeah, Paul Berry taught me that one. Uh, you can refuse the poison apple in the outstretched hand of the Wicked Witch. Not really. That's kind of been changed, but it's got a really cool ride in there now. Uh, or duck as Captain Hook fires his cannon. Perhaps not for long. I've heard some talk about, you know, with people finding problems. Well, I guess the, the pirates get to stay, but the uh, natives might get taken out of there. Huh. Uh, so here, Disney fantasies are yours to enjoy. That's only some rumor stuff I've heard. I don't know if that is true, by the way. Uh, 1963, the people at Pexicola ask Walt Disney to create a pavilion for the 1964-65 New York World's Fair. It's a Small World was an immediate hit, and since the time, it made its permanent home in Fantasyland. This salute to the children of the world has consistently been one of the Magic Kingdom's favorite entertainments. Dozens of artists, model makers, engineers, musicians, sculptors, and architects, costume designers, lighting experts, and other artisans use their skills to create a unique international voyage. It's a Small World proves that it really is a small world after all. There's a lot more into this chapter, and I think I'm going to pick it up now. Oh, well, maybe not. There's only a couple more sections. Let's finish the section, and then we'll, we'll tease the next time we'll be Adventureland. But there's a couple more sections. Let's keep reading. The inspiration for Fantasyland, of course, was provided by Disney's classic animated films, namely Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs from 1937, uh, Pinocchio in 1940. Although, is the Pinocchio right still Walt Disney World? I don't think it's there. It is Disneyland. I don't yeah, know about still Disney there. World. Oh, but apparently there's Pinocchio's Village and a, a snack bar. I don't know if that's still there. Uh, so then Dumbo, 1941, there is still a, a circus in there. Mm -hmm. They got new tents. They got, like, two flying elephant rides now. Uh, Adventures Vic and Top and Bottom, Mr. Toad. Unfortunately, Mr. Toad's wild ride is gone. Oh, by the it's way. It's in Disneyland, though, still. It is in Disneyland, but it's Walt Disney World. Yeah. Um, they have, have you seen the Funkos? Out in stores. I, I think have. you told me you saw yeah, the I, I uh, saw them for Mickey order, and uh, sure. Matterhorn. I found the Mr. Toad. So oh, guess really? what I have now? Yay. <laughs> also, they had some Haunted Mansion ones, and so I had to get those at some point, too. But I, I found the Mr. Toad, and I, and I love it because his eyes are all got the mania oh, yeah. of driving. Of course. I would love to find some of those other ones. Those would be great. They need to make a Hulkamania with that little swing. A <laughs> Hulkamania great. with <laughs> that would be great. Oh, but nobody would get the joke but us. Uh, Cinderella for the castle, and of course Cinderella's golden carousel. Do they still call it that? Because I think it's Sword in the Stone theme now. I think. Because I remember they had the Sword in the Stone out in front that you can pull on it, and I, of course, I was not able to pull the swords. I'm not the king. I'm not the king. I'm just saying it. Yeah. <laughs> That's an audio one song for anyone who knows. All right, so, but he also got King Stephen's Banquet Hall Restaurant, inspired from Sweeping Beauty. Sword in the Stone, because you have Merlin's Magic Shop. A lot of this, I don't know if it's still there. The Aristocats had a gift shop. I don't know if that's still there. And the Black Cauldron, they had Gurgi's Munchies and Crunchies Snack Park. I they think that to, is yeah. still there. Is I, don't, I don't know if they do or not, but I remember. The, I think there still is. I remember the sign itself was great. Yeah. The sign, I love seeing Gurgi. He's about the only thing that they allowed to have around. <laughs> I, I didn't see it, but I, I feel like I've heard somebody say that it's still there. So I hope it is. If it's not there, somebody let me know. Munchies and Crunchies. Munchies and Crunchies. Which the book is better, by the way. Uh, although the style of that movie is really amazing. Yeah, uh, Don Bluth. Right? Yeah. Uh, I think he... It might have been one of the last things he worked I on. I think it was. Just about before, the last thing. Before he went off on and, his and, own. And, and yeah. he did uh, American Tale. Yeah, did American Tale. Really liked. Well, no, that. Secret of Nim, he, I think he did Oh, first. he did do that. And there's first. something even before Secret of Nim. I remember I was reading a thing on Don Bluth. There was something else he worked on. Uh, but oh, I, I, I can't Nim. think of it. But Secret, yeah, Secret of Nim is very, very dark and stuff, but... Oh yes, and it matches the no, tone no, of the Black Cauldron. No, no offense to uh, no offense to Don Bluth, but his movies always put me to sleep. They, mm. they, I don't know what it is about the toner. They, they're very well animated, very well drawn, but sometimes the stories aren't as good. Yeah. That's what Disney he's came a, up he's with. He's a great guy. He's a great animator, yeah. and I mean Dragon's Lair, man. Come oh on. yeah, outstanding. Still wishing that movies can can happen. He keeps Space, trying. Uh, Space Ace, yes. Yeah, I like it. When he started making arcade games, and they were amazing. Yeah, I loved it. So, anyways, I got one last section here. What outstanding live action film also inspires an attraction of Fantasyland? Not anymore. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Sea monster-like submarines chart an eerie voyage in Volcania. <laughs> Pardon me. I'm going to have to edit later. Uh, Captain Nemo's South Seas Hideaway. Slipping silently into a peaceful tropical lagoon, the submarines take us on a coral reefs and sunless caverns 
even beneath the Arctic ice. This breathtaking underwater world is actually made of steel, fiberglass, stucco, epoxy paint, and gold leaf. They transform a 11.5 million gallon tank into a watery wonderland of icebergs, rock formations, seagrass, kelp, giant clams, seahorses, and corals of every shape and hue. And now that's been replaced by uh, the Nemo yeah, attraction Disney World at Disneyland. Disney? Yeah, I don't know about Well, Disney World, Disney World uh, they put a... Uh, I, well, I, at one point it was a Winnie the Pooh Playland. I'm not sure that that is still there. Because mm. I think that is where they've built Dumbo Circus. Uh, they have an extra tent in there. But they do have over at Epcot... They have... Um, the 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 fun, the seas with Nemo in a different style of interaction. It's it's kind of a dark ride style, mm-hmm. but it does have some aquariums to look in. But it's not quite the same as being inside the aquarium. Yeah. Um, I have not gotten to actually ride them. I just know they exist, and that's what happens when you get to become a Disney expert with only one trip under your belt. You know everything, <laughs> but you haven't gotten to experience. Uh, but speaking of experience things, let's go take a journey with Lost Boy Eric in Hershey, Pennsylvania, as he takes a dark ride through the Hershey's factory. Let's take a ride at a Disney park. Let's take a ride right now. Boop, boop. Hey everyone, welcome aboard the Hershey's Chocolate Factory Tour. For your safety, please remain seated with your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. We are on our way to the Hershey Chocolate Factory. Your guide will meet you at the entrance. See you inside. Part of 
my job is to make sure all of that milk meets our high quality standards. Once it passes testing, we mix sugar into the milk using large batching tanks. We pasteurize and condense the sweetened milk and then blend in the perfect amount of unsweetened chocolate. This is where the art of chocolate making all comes together. As the mixture cooks, it begins to form delicious little pieces that we call chocolate crumb.
making every pizza Hershey's goodness. Come visit us again soon. Please remain seated until the door opens and watch your step onto the moving platform. And enjoy the rest of your day here at Hershey's Chocolate World. So long, everyone. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye. Out there in TV land. Now here's something we hope you'll really like. A Neverland podcast television review. So, and you haven't gotten to watch this, so. No, not yet. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I talk about this thing, because I don't want to spoil any story stuff. But let me just say, the uh, the first major action sequence, I mean, it is, it is fantastic to have a Marvel Studios Hollywood level budget for because I mean you know CW has done fairly well with superhero type shows yeah they done pretty good but they're limited on the budget yeah so only so much they could do this is what John Hammond would say spared no expense there's a fantastic scene of Falcon well, the great, sent on a secret mission in the beginning of this the other great thing that they got in this situation with the D- DC ones they're not connected to the movies right and yeah this, this is connected there, there's good things about not being connected they can do their own thing yeah the bad thing is. It gets real cornball and silly. And uh, in this case, I'm not saying that they don't ever do that with these, but the good thing is that they are connected so that they can, because that you already have your uh, audience fully invested. Yeah. They're fully Well, they had everybody already invested in the CW series, and a lot of people were disappointed that they didn't bring over that over into some of the the Well, yeah, that's how I I felt about it. I I can understand that, yeah. I felt about that. Grant Gustin maybe would have been a better Flash than Ezra Miller. I agree with that 100%. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But as I was saying, so like this, there's this great opening sequence, and I love they they really have established the good old Sam Wilson, the Falcon, Mm -hmm. the burden of being given Cap's shield. Well, especially a guy of that, talking about Captain, who I'm Yeah. You got so, who's done so well. He's supposed to not just been around for a couple movies. He's supposed to be around. You think about it. He was gone for a while through World War II. Went through. He disappeared and yeah. come back. And people know him. The shield is him. a symbol that means oh, so much. Yeah. Um, so, but you think he's he takes it with him, but he doesn't use it. That I found that to be very interesting. And that seems to be a good storyline that's going to be going. One of the things that's great is with this opening sequence, and this I, I got to tell you about this because oh, yeah, it's all right. it is there. It's kind of a covert operation. And he's trying to prevent some Libyans going in who who take some hostage and stole a U.S. Uh, uh, some sort of bomber plane. It looks Libyans. like I don't know exactly. <laughs> there, I knew you would get it. Uh, the, like it was so Back to the Future. I could I was totally hearing Doc Brown going the Libyans. <laughs> so yes, that's why I had to tell you about the first thing because of the Libyans, the Falcon versus the Libyans, and it, oh, it was so much fun. And um, Anthony Mackie, I love him as the Falcon. He is so good. I really like. It's, uh, there's one point that it's Good just actor, it's anyway. just so funny. He's doing a great job. Uh, so I mean, I really like this opening scene, but it is nice to get we're got we're diving into their their personal lives. So we see Anthony Mackie and his sister, and you know, trying to save the, his parents' home and and business. Uh, I won't say what it is, but then also we dive over and we get to see the Bucky or you know James yeah. McKinnon Barnes. You know, he's he's trying to get away from being the Winter Soldier, and he's in. And that's good. Part of his pardon, you get to see he's got to meet with a psychologist and to, to kind of talk through stuff. And he's got certain conditions of him being fully pardoned because they know he wasn't responsible for what he did as the Winter Soldier. They did the best they could do with I think it was was it I think it was Captain America two that they dealt with the uh, Winter Soldier, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, his, it, was, it was his second movie. Was now, the they Winter only Soldier. did so much that, as much as they could do because it, they they had him as a villain. But I'm going to tell you, yeah. in the comic book. They he was went. a villain for a long time, and I think. The, yeah, and it was huge. I mean, I, I was reading the comic book of that, and I only got to read one or two of the. Uh, I'm not going to say the comic books. I'm going to say the the uh, novels of the. You know how they do? They put them all together, make what they call the, the uh, novels of that uh, graphic novels, and they were huge, and they went on and on and on, and they were really really good. But you got to understand that character. And there's only so much they can do with the movie. Yeah, you can't do do a bunch of decades of comic history. But I gotta say, history. these these uh, things where they bring them straight to the TV like they're doing here with the Disney Plus and all, somehow because they did this with the the which one too the WandaVision, Wanda Vision Wanda yeah they somehow they because you go with them through these journeys on every episode you get to know the characters better. yeah and I, I like and it. that's what's happening it's with like this series, series yes you know? yes it's, yes it's great that way so we got to dive in and falcon we also got to see of what what i mean imagine what it would be like when you are an assassin and you're only beginning to get your memories back of all the people you've murdered that'd be terrible yeah 
And that's where he's going through. And I, I don't want to spoil this for you or anybody oh, else, man. but there was such a touch. Oh, I, I could have cried. Where he's, you see that he's befriended this one person and he's had, you know, you, you see Bucky, he's had a nightmare of remembering this person he's murdered mm. and it is connected to this other person that he's befriending. And I don't want to get into the detail of it, but oh my goodness. Well, I, uh, it really, whew, I, it'll, it'll hit you right in the I can tell you this, it's probably going to make me ball. And, you, you might. And, uh, well, for, you can, for anyone who knows, and, and I'm not trying to get too deep into this, but... I have had seven brain surgeries. And yeah. uh, I had two years ago at this time, I was just coming home from uh, three brain surgeries in one month. And I was out of my mind for a couple of days. You're out of your mind all the time. Oh, yeah, you jerk. <laughs> no, but I was out of my mind for a couple of days. You keep setting them up, I'll keep sticking them. There was, a, uh, there was a time where I didn't quite know what was going on for those couple of days. And I, when people mess up with your head like that. Oh, golly. And, and not to mention other things that was going on. So, But when you're coming out of that, it's terrifying. To, and you, you had a piece quite, of glitter on your head. It's, it's gone now, it, by the way. It's, just it, it's terrifying to not know exactly what's real yeah. and what's not. Yeah. And what is a dream and what is not a dream. And, yeah. and so I can really relate with having your mind messed with and mm-hmm. being dug in there and people messing around with it. The thought of that is is terrifying that somebody had tried to reprogram you. Yeah. I've had someone made you into a killer. I, I've never made a killer, but I've been reprogrammed, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And so I I can understand how terrifying that because while I was in the hospital, I actually thought for a while there that people were messing with me. because uh, I was so I had not slept for like three days in a row and your mind messes with you and I did a stupid thing and watched the Twilight Zone of all oh, things. Oh no for my mind to mess with and I was really gone. And oh, so no. I can imagine how this poor man must have got, felt if he was a real man. Yeah. To, so, yeah, I can relate with that. But, yeah, so there's a nice deep dive into that. Uh, also, I, I won't tell you the fate of the shield. And I don't, you know, well, I guess you know that there's there's a new Captain America that pops out at the end. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the Falcon, of course, he doesn't he doesn't want to carry that shield. And. Uh, okay. like, there might be a little spoiler, but because you already know about Cap- the, a new Captain America, he actually gives the shield to the Smithsonian exhibit that's dedicated to Steve Rogers, mm. thinking that's where it's going to stay. It'll be on display. And then here comes the Minister of Defense at the end of it. Sorry if I'm spoiling anything. He comes out and says, we know that America needs a symbol. We need a hero. So let me introduce you to the new Captain America. And here comes this guy. By the way, this actor is Kurt Russell's son. I found that out. That's awesome. I, I saw a picture. But oh, he sorry, comes out with the shield as as a new Captain America. Huh. I don't think it's going to last long because I've already seen footage where Falcon will have that shield. Well, Kurt Russell's son looks very similar to Kurt Russell at times. He also, people have kind of notice he looks a lot like um, uh, Carl from Up. Ah. <laughs> when you put the mask on him, it does kind of, when he smiles, yeah. he's got the square jaw and the, the big kind of nose squished down. He does look like Carl from Up. <laughs> but if you, uh, I've seen pictures, I'm talking actual, not in the makeup and all mm-hmm. that stuff, but if you, the actual pictures of him with his dad, they have a lot of similarities. Oh yeah, I've seen that picture, man. Yeah. So his hair's a little blonder. It looks a little like more blonder, like his mom's hair. But he had, Kurt had a little more blonder hair when yeah. he was younger. And Goldie sure did oh, too. She had a lot of blonder me? hair when oh, she was yeah. younger. <laughs> so he's got mama's blonde hair, but oh my goodness, that is just very cool. So I'm very excited to see where this goes. I very much enjoyed it. I thought it was and fantastic. And both father and son are involved with Marvel. Yes. And I can't wait for next Friday for the next episode. And they're just firing all cylinders. When this series is done, we have the Loki series coming this I'm summer. I'm looking forward to that. I love Loki. My goodness, what a time to be a Marvel fan. Yay. I am so happy. Oh, my, my inner geek is, is, is screaming in passion of joy. Hooray! <laughs> so, yes, loving it, loving it, loving it. So, uh, but now to move on to other bits of reviews, we have a movie to review. There'll be spectacle, there'll be fantasy, there'll be daring do and stuff like you would never see. Hey, a movie! Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be a movie! Starring everybody and me. Boy, I wish I were you people seeing this for the first time. Kermit, I got a great picture of the chicken! Oh, good! Now, okay, I will say, I was a little taken aback. By the four by three aspect ratio, and I, I posted to Facebook, and people were like, "Oh no, I think that's because it was it was IMAX." But I looked at the IMAX ratio; it's completely different. The only thing I could find, and I should have researched this a bit more, like there was an IGN video that said that 
Zack Snyder actually just kind of likes the uh, the four by three aspect ratio no, for his, some it's reason. It's his thing. Yeah. It's like his thing. So yes, this is in four by three aspect ratio, which I thought was weird. But I, well, I will say I did like this a little better than the the, the previous film. Uh, but it is funny that it's chopped into six parts because I felt like this would have made a better series, probably mini series. Go for, like, yeah, I think that it, you could have broke it into those chunks, and I would have been perfectly fine with that. Yeah, uh, and and we were just saying this before. It felt like Zack Snyder was trying to be Peter Jackson, like he thought he was making Lord of the Rings out of this because he's trying to do some epic scale of things, which kind of worked. But he's also putting in as much slow mo in there as he po- could possibly fit, and I was getting really tired of it. And yeah. that, that we were, it, it, it's like. And I, it's like right after I watched Justice League, I thought, you know, I, I noticed the Matrix trilogy is on HBO Max. Yeah, and I watched yes. the Matrix, which did use some slow mo, but mm-hmm. they used it at a time that really did help tell the story. And I felt like this one, he he used it like he was trying to create emotion, but really it's like he's creating music videos. Yeah. Like this, and I, I know there's some people really enjoyed this, but. And that's great. That's great. We, we get to meet Irish West, but anyone who's not a comic fan or not watching anything with oh, Flash no, is not going to realize this is Irish West because it doesn't go anywhere. But we drew out into 10 minutes. This moment where Barry goes and is saving Iris from a car crash, which she's not wearing her seatbelt. Make sure you wear your seatbelt, folks. Absolutely. And here she is flying through the air. Does she have the look on her face of somebody who's flying to their death? Your your face, your emotion and brain reaction is going to react to the fact that you're flying through the air out of your car. She didn't look like she's screaming for her life. She looks like very content. Just yeah. happy because they wanted to have this moment of him moving super fast, but getting able to just pause and stare at her. Yeah. And just so we can have a music video moment where the, I, uh, yeah, yeah. And this kind of thing kind of kept happening. And I got kind of annoyed with it because frankly, this could have been in maybe a two hour, maybe two and a half hour movie. If it wasn't being slowed down every five minutes when there wasn't dialogue it was going in slow-mo in fact even when there was dialogue there was slow-mo because there's even the moment where the flash is running and i like the way it's handled in the television show when he's running you might see his arms and legs are just blurred and he can be talking at normal speed but his arms and legs are going they actually had a stupid moment where he's moving his body's moving slow-mo because he's supposed to be using the speed force and he's talking normal, but his body is barely moving because he's inside the speed mo- force and is barely moving and running. But he's talking at normal speed because he's talking to Cyborg. And I just... Yeah, there were several uh, times like that where I thought that they it wasn't making much sense. It but wasn't. to tell you the truth, I wasn't a fan of the film because... And, and I'm sorry if I'm hurting anyone's feelings. I don't mean to do that. But I, I'm glad for the people who are Zach, what I call Zach and I. Who are Zach, Zach Snyder fans. And that's not an insult either, by the way. I'm not a Zack Snyder fan. Uh, and I'm talking about his movies, not the person. I got nothing against the person whatsoever. Um, I'm sure he's a nice guy. Um, I say that about everybody, by the way. But that being said... Uh, <laughs> yeah, the point. <laughs> the point is that uh, with Zack Snyder, uh, he, he's really good at some of the stuff he does. That being said, this film, he did make the first film. The first film, he did all yeah. the way until the very end. And then he had some family problems. He had some family, family problems. Yeah. Or, or, or so Josh Whedon took over. Some people say that, and then they also say later on that the uh, company didn't like where he was going through, or whatever it was. I don't know what the situation was. I don't need to know. That they uh, decided to not have him finish it, and he didn't. And they had Josh Whedon take over, and he did. And the things that Josh Whedon did that I did like, I don't it was great. The Danny Elfman's score for one. The Danny Elfman's music, I yeah. love. Of course, I'm Especially because he of, hinted at the Batman music and, a little and bit. Superman a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But the truth is, is I like that Danny Elfman's music uh, was mostly right for it. And they used a lot of the Wonder Woman music that fit for it. Yeah. And in this one, I hated the music because even when they did use the Wonder Woman music, it didn't fit very well. Yeah. And, and then they added the new Amazonian yeah. chanting. Oh! It sounds like Tarzan. Weird. Yeah. Uh, but that being said, that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, so that's that, personal opinion. It, but all that being said, they also, even in the scenes that were somewhat slowed down in the other version at times, they slowed it down twice as long. Yeah, and, to where it was barely moving. And it, it was worse than anything in Lord of the Rings. Because you know, Lord of the Rings kind of you would utilize some slow-mo. But, and some people were bothered by it got to be a bit much yeah, in Return of the King. So. And it was a bit, maybe in the Return of the King, a little a little overdone. This was on. This had more slow-mo effects than the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy combined. I, I still, I'm not even saying it's a bad movie. I'm just yeah, saying I that, still liked it. Yeah. Uh, and I even liked the other one. I just didn't love it. Yeah. I, I will say, as far as the, the, the positives, 
The positive yeah, was... Yeah, there's plenty of positives to list, too. The, uh, I can't think of the villain's name right now. Uh, uh, Steppenwolf, Steppenwolf lived Wolf. so much better he and did. having Darkseid in. That was an improvement. He it looked was. a lot better, too. I, just was, I, I kept thinking he was going to actually do something, but he didn't. But yeah. I like seeing Darkseid in all of his side villains that you see. Yes, with the granny, uh, granny, granny, what's his name? What's uh, name? And I forgot. I, I like that, and I liked a lot of the other side characters. And then, I think oh, the other well. guy you kind of see back there with Darkseid, which I only know them because of the Superman animated series, mm-hmm. which, by the way, is on HBO Max now. Did you notice? Yes, it's all. <laughs> of course you noticed. I, I own it, of course, but still, <laughs> yeah. that's not the point. I own it to the donut. Okay, that's, that's a solid That being too. said, was I was really glad yeah. that they they did a lot of good things, but... Yeah, there was a lot of good, the, you know, the, despite the, all the things I criticized about it, there was a lot of good. But the, the thing I, I thought was funny that the Zack and Ice online were saying was stuff like... Uh, he made it so much better because you got to know this much and this much. That. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but that mind. did help. We got a lot more, you know, the the time to spend with each character, so we got more familiar with the characters, so we actually cared about them. That was with the improvement. That, 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 That's what made it better. I thought it was funny and, that they kept saying that so and so didn't do that. They said about Joss Whedon. I said, yeah, but the problem was, was that you should not have to have twice as long as a movie in order yeah. to know those they characters. They should have given those characters a movie themselves. Yeah, that's what they did. Which I guess kind of was the idea uh, when I watched some behind-the-scenes yeah. stuff. This was supposed to be centered around Cyborg. Yeah. To be able, and we did. We got a lot more of Cyborg's story. That was good. And, which is great because I do love that character because, because of the Teen Titans cartoon. Mm-hmm. But one thing that I was missing, in the original cut, we got one good booyah by the end of it from Cyborg. And yeah. I love that. Gone. They, they put it in this one. Gone. At the very end, he says "booyah." Not, not in the Snyder cut. Yeah, I saw it. At the very end, he said "booyah." At the very, very end, he said "booyah." Okay, because yeah. I, I thought it would happen sooner. And one thing that was also cut that I did kind of like was where the Flash was not confident because he'd never been in a fight. He says, "I just push things." Yeah, they they took that scene out where he's talking and to Batman about that. But yeah, they should have because you do see the moment where the first thing he does, he just goes up and super speed pushes something, and he pushes Wonder Woman's sword to her, like in the original one. It's yeah. like. And that makes a lot more sense when you have the conversations like, I've never fought anybody, but I, I, I push things. Yeah. I miss, and, I miss those things. Honestly, yeah. I, I kind of like, if I could take my favorite parts of the original and favorite parts of this, even though it's blended the, together instance, a little bit, I like seeing Batman, or excuse me, I apologize. I like seeing Superman's black costume. But there was really no point of it. Yeah, I wanted to see the red and the red and blue back. Yeah, because like was, in the original, there was just no point in it. I mean, it was neat to see. And yeah, it, it was. Been a it point. would. It would have been cool if he had come out of the grave. That's what with I was it. thinking. That's what I was uh, thinking. Like, that way, it would have been more of a throwback too than when he did return and yeah. he had the black suit when he came out of the you know the, uh, but the when, when he, of solitude. When, also, there's something when he came up from the grave in the original that I loved. It was uh, whenever Batman and Superman fought in the uh, whatever it's called, Dark Knight. Uh, yeah, Batman versus Superman. Yeah. You mean? Yeah, yeah. They, they, Batman says, "Do you bleed?" To Superman in the the original cut, and I'm not sure who. Oh yeah, Superman. It. I think he said, "He says, do you bleed to Batman?'" Yeah, and that was cool because it was and they a cut that out. It was, they, I guess it was a little dark for Superman though. But he was. But he was himself. not in his right mind yeah. at the moment. You know, and I thought that was so. I have to say, between the two. If you can, if you take bits and pieces of both and put you it probably together, could get I'd have perfect. A, yeah, have a good. There was a lot of great things about this. Yeah, there were a lot of great things. There was a lot of things to like, <laughs> and I'm glad that they trimmed down a lot of because they made the Flash a little bit too annoying to try to be comic relief. They took out some of the more annoying yeah. bits to and where I he, still he, he made was annoying, but he, he was much better. But he was with, much with they cut out some of the stuff. Uh, I still don't like the Flash costume because it looks like it's being held together with chicken wire. Which I think was supposed to be on purpose. In yeah, to look like because he's making it himself. And you got that in the but first But you would think cut. maybe in some at some point Bruce would find would make him a costume. I think in the uh, the original plan was by the time they made a second one, the Flash would be yeah. then he was going to. Yeah. But they didn't get a chance to do that for the film. Yeah. But there was there was a lot to like about, and I like kind of the extended battle scene with the Amazons fighting with uh, with uh, with the uh, Steppenwolf and his. Oh, they had a name for him. The the uh, the parademons. Yeah, yeah parademons. parademons. Uh, I liked that extended battle because it was done really really yeah, well. Watching the them put through every so and the, the bell's and seeing the, the sacrifices that some of the Amazons were willing to make to seal themselves in and have the whole temple collapse yeah. off like that. There was something to protect in the, first the movie world. That I oh. liked in the first movie that this because uh, Amazons like, are awesome. <laughs> in the first movie, there was a, a scene where this family could not drive fast enough to get out. of the Right, way. and the Flash or whatever didn't, yeah, didn't he, come up he, and get him out of there. He, 
pushed him. No, but, Superman did because they they cut that up because they wanted Superman fighting Steppenwolf. That was the yeah. change. So if Superman saved the people in the truck in the original cut, but this this time there is no people in the truck. Yeah, because they wanted him to pound the daylights out of St- Steppenwolf. But Flash was pushing him with all his might and push, 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 yeah. push, push, and, and getting him out of there. And uh, that's when Superman but there was something. Yeah, Superman was in and, that and bit. helped him yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. Which is kind of what Superman does. He saves people. But it was kind of neat to see Superman actually have to throw it down and fight, though. Because yeah. you don't get that much in movies. Well, so. they did that in, bo- in both of them. They could, see, I, I, I was... I did, went ahead because I knew I hadn't watched it enough to remember. So I, was, I would just so I remember like an and, IGN video. They were kind of pointing out the differences. I went back I watched and it. watched them. Uh, watched it like the day before the new one came out. I was like, because I want to be able to the, watch the, the it look. and say... That's why when different ones were saying... Uh, there is nothing except one scene that's in the first one. I'm like, uh, uh-uh. uh, it's like eighty percent. It was a lot of things added, in, but there was some stuff taken away. But it was sure. a lot of things added in. Yeah, and, but and, it did make it better. And I liked. It. We, I felt like we got more of the relationship between uh, Cyborg and his father. That was a good thing. Uh, getting to see the bit with his, his mother. Getting to see, you know, speaking of, yeah, there was a lot of the Cyborg ones I really liked. Yeah, well, speaking of which, story. one of the things I've always loved, and I want to say because I think it's cool. I love that the actor I already loved him, but I love the fact that the actor who plays Cyborg's dad is the same yes, actor who, who makes, created the Terminator. Yes, who creates Skynet and yeah. everything, dude. Yes. That's just tremendous. Somebody was thinking up. Oh, and I even love the actor who popped up as Martian Manhunter. The, oh, the, I, love I love that actor. Martian Manhunter. I'm well, so excited I, I to see him. I hated the dream sequence at the end. Yeah, the, the alternate reality. I, and, they're, they're trying to build a multiverse. But you know the thing that I find interesting? Why? Well, when I thought about this, okay, so this this is a multiverse. We're looking at what if a, a Superman had uh, put his dominance down. Mm. We are also in a DC extended universe movie where Superman has killed. Yeah. So the potential of Superman going further is there because that's like the Injustice games. That's the, you know once Superman makes his yeah. first kill because something happens to Lois in the yeah. games, and that's why they keep saying Lois is the key. So if something happens to Lois, he will go over the edge because we've already seen him kill. Yeah. That's so right. that is an interesting thing. But that whole thing but with the it Joker, gets a little, yeah. Is, I can't, I, this but, is going to sound cruel. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm going to jump back to Martian Manhunter, though, before okay. we get too far I was away. Say, I'm not a big fan of that actor who plays the Joker. Yeah. And that laugh, that horrible. Yeah, it's still no good. And people were saying, oh, he redeemed himself. No, he didn't. That was a horrible. No. <laughs> Jared Leto is a good actor, but he was not meant to play the Joker. But speaking of right. Martian Manhunter, okay. <sighs> Think of the awkward conversation. The Martha Kent and Lois Lane are going to have back on the farm. Yeah. When suddenly Lois is referencing this conversation she had with Martha in an apartment that wasn't Martha because it was the Martian Manhunter. Yeah. Can we not deal with this issue? Was that? I mean, I, I, it seemed like Martian Man, a Manhunter at that point was thrown and just be like, hi, look, Martian Manhunter, isn't that cool? And I'm like, wait a minute. So that whole conversation... And how does he know all the stuff that Martha Kent yeah, would know? Yeah. How does he know that name? Um, I do. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> the, uh, there was going to be an awkward conversation that nobody was going to be able to explain <laughs> Martha Kent not knowing anything about this conversation at yeah. Lois's apartment. Yeah. <laughs> so that's another problem I had with things. But I, I just, other than that, I was it's, excited to see Martian Manhunter because I love that character. I love the character. And I love that he popped up at the end. Although I had heard originally there was supposed to be a Green Lantern coming by at the end. I don't know if that's yeah, true. I've heard, I've heard about that instead of Martian Manhunter. Why can't we have both? Yeah. And the only other fear I have, you can call it a fear if you want. As I said before, not a Zack Snyder fan, movie-wise, and I always feared that, and I'm assuming that this is his way of trying to get back in and make bridges to get back in and finish the films. I, uh, Sorry, fans. Yeah, it's don't, supposed to they put a stop on I, I don't want more Zack Snyder films. Yeah. And it's not because I have anything against him or you, if you're a fan of those. It's just that I like the thought of giving someone else a chance because I thought they gave him too many reins uh, into the thing. It was like, because he wasn't a fan of Superman. He wasn't a fan, He said this himself. He wasn't a fan of Superman. He wasn't a fan of all that stuff. He wanted to do his own thing, which is great if you're going to do that, except... Not if you're going to ruin it for the fans. We no learned more. from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, when you get somebody who's a big fan of the characters, they will make superior movies of that that's character. Right. Because that's they right. love the character. And they're going to be true to it. And that's also why Venom didn't work so much in Spider-Man 3, because Sam Raimi did not love Venom. He did he it because... Want to put him in there. He didn't want to do it, but the fans really wanted to see Venom. And, and I, that's why he, he ended up ruining because he didn't have any love for it, that character. It wasn't, which is unfortunate. And in truth... Just my opinion. I think they should have waited for Venom for another film. Yeah, they could have. They could have started building it, but then they could have done Venom with their own movie. Yeah, yeah, that would have been yeah. better. And quite honestly, but yeah, we're jumping past where my point sorry, was to go keep ahead, us. Brother. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to trace that rabbit. That, but I'm just making the point that yeah, you have to have somebody who loves the character if you're planning on them making a 
really good movie about those characters. Yeah. So I think, yeah, next time around, find some people who really love these characters and let them make They'll it. They'll be true to it. Uh, and I've been seeing where people are like, oh, my, the whole thing with Iris, I loved it because it's going to build to the, the Flash movie that's coming. Uh, I don't think that Flash movie is coming anymore. Yeah, there's talks, but who knows? Because uh, really, they they're Not slowly kind of winding down. They 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 kind of felt like they 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 weren't making the money. They weren't doing what they were supposed to do. Uh, they did do well at least with Wonder Woman and Shazam was amazing. And they are and yes going to go in there. And Aquaman was all well, you know. I didn't realize a lot of people really hated Aquaman too. I don't know why. I yeah, loved, I, like I that, liked yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I need to watch that one again. I haven't seen it since we watched. We saw what would they call that theater where it spreads across the walls? It was so cool. Yeah, the IMAX type of thing. Yeah, it was basically like IMAX. Uh, but now, yeah, I but the, their their biggest successes was that first Wonder Woman and Shazam, which was phenomenal. Of course, Wonder Woman 1984 was like, well, that wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. Yeah, things better. That's pretty much what we yeah. said. Yeah, uh, and I worry about the Shazam sequel that somebody might mess that up. And we also are looking forward to a Black Adam with The Rock. Uh, but I don't know that that Flash movie is on schedule anymore because they kind of wanted to shut down a lot of what they built and try again, which is why you're getting a new Robert Pattinson Batman, and we're not getting a Ben Affleck Batman anymore. We're getting Robert Pattinson, and I, I'll, 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 I'll withhold judgment when I actually watch it, I guess. But I, what I see of it, I'm like, uh, I don't know. But we'll we'll see when it comes out. It might be amazing, and I because Christian Bale, I had a few doubts on because I wasn't familiar with him. Yeah, and I was like, I don't know, this guy doesn't have that Batmanish look. But he was he made a pretty good Batman. Although I get tired of this. Yeah, <laughs> you're saying against injustice. He had to take a breath to say three words every time. And I was like, I miss Michael Keaton. Yeah, he's still my favorite. Still okay. here well, for his live action. Well, I, I I still love Adam West though too. Just oh, well, me too. Because Adam West was just fun. But yeah, Michael Keaton was the man. Kevin Conroy was better, but he's not a live action Batman. Well, he kind of is. Yeah, didn't he get to be in the CW series? Yeah, that was I didn't, fun. See, I didn't see he that. Got the, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Because Kevin Conroy is still the best Batman yeah. actor. Yeah. Not you know not known for necessarily live action, but still Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. Yeah. Although you know I still really love Caesar. Romero is the Joker. I can't help it. <laughs> he was so much fun. So, all right, but that's what we have on that. Oh, and one thing I did kind of point out, I thought was interesting. It was kind of a, a drug out scene, but uh, I, I, I did kind of appreciate what they were trying to do is we had that scene where one of the girls in the village grabs Aquaman's sweater and kind yeah. of sniffs it, which some of it, I think they pointed out the guy who does the, uh, the pitch meeting joke satires. It's like, wouldn't that smell like fish? Uh, but what, ah! What was what was interesting about that is the, oh. the difference between the DC and the Marvel characters is the DC heroes are revered almost godlike. Yeah, well they um, are. Yeah, and then in the Mar- which when they uh, when they first crossed over at one point, the DC heroes would get into the Marvel universe and like, what in the world? Because the Marvel heroes sometimes some were just flat out hated. Yeah, and- Spider Man doesn't get respected. The X Men are mutants, and so they're hated. So it's a completely different world. And Superman judges everybody in the Marvel universe, saying, "Like you guys are not doing a very good job because you should be being revered as gods around and here." One thing I do say, but having that scene, I want to finish my point no. before I let you go. Uh, having that scene showed the reverence that they end up having for these characters, and which I really wish I could have seen more of Superman being. Being revered by more than just Lois Lane, yeah, because we that's, that's all they do. That is one thing I like about Batman vs Superman is getting to see like the Alex Ross paintings come to life, where he's the people reaching yeah. out to Superman for help to save me off my flooding building, you know. But I liked that they had that moment because it shows how they revere them. But thing is, Aquaman had well, and I guess in the village he has, but he hadn't built himself up to everybody else. But I guess nobody knew about his amazing ability to just happen to be in the Gotham Harbor when <laughs> Steppenwolf blows a hole in the, in your tunnel. He just happened us to be there. So nobody knew he had that talent yet. So I guess he'd have been more revered if they knew. There, was, yeah, there was a scene that was put back in that I thought was good. Something I didn't understand in the first movie where they kept having him talking with what's her head, the uh, queen and the or, or princess or whatever she was. Uh, Mira, you mean? M- Mira, yes. Yeah. They had her talk with her, and it, then they had her talk with William Defoe. Yeah, and, I like having that and, back. And finally, he got the, that before he got his real armor in the Aquaman movie. Because yeah. remember, Aquaman movie came out a year later. Yeah. So I like the fact that um, he was because I didn't understand the original movie. He was like, I had nothing to do with it. Suddenly, he shows up and he has armor and he's fighting, and it, and I yeah. didn't understand that. Well, in this you get to see where he gets his yeah, armor, his, his, his green and like gold looking yeah. stuff, and he has that yeah. Triton. 
Because you didn't see that in the first one. Trident. Just, <laughs> Trident, not Triton. Tri- Triton is a, uh, is a, a king in uh, yeah, but, <laughs> but anyway, you, you get to see that in this, uh, where he got it and, and how he came across it. You didn't see that yeah, in the first. Yeah, that so, was nice. So that was nice to see. Yeah. Like, well, no, no, I love you. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I love having one of the foe pop up. That yeah. was cool. So, and then I noticed they took out, I I really, I actually, I kind of like the way he was in the original, like, where they had that almost surferish mentality yeah. in the original. They cut all that out to make Aquaman a lot more grim. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't as much fun. That's true. You took all of the Jason Momoa's charm out of him. That's true, too. Because he's, he's got all kinds of charm, you know, and they just sucked it right out. So I, I didn't appreciate that. I mean, because Aquaman is an awesome character. Yeah, he is. I but Gal Gadot is still awesome as Wonder Woman. Always. And, uh, Wonder, I, 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 I love watching, watching Wonder Woman kick some butt, man. That whole She's the great. extended scene they did, although it's like... I, I love that this was pointed also pointed out in the pitch meeting. She's trying to save this building and these hostages from the bomb. So what does she do? Blows up the place that to get rid of the guy. She blew up the place he was going to bomb anyway. Yeah, <laughs> not so great there, Wonder Woman. Uh, it was a really awesome scene watching her grab that bomb and like and and showing how fast that she really is when yeah. she's going and saving the kids with the bullets and then getting within like five seconds she gets that bomb and takes it in the air. That was pretty awesome. I was cheering, but then I was like, when she came down and dealt with the guy by you know she's fast enough. All she, when he's he's reloading, and all you gotta do is come take the gun away, bop him in the face. Yeah. That's it. It was it was overkill to do the whole yeah. symbol clash thing that she does with her wristbands and blowing the side of the building up. The guy won, basically. If, if, Thanks, congratulations. You achieved what he was trying to do, except he didn't get to kill anybody. If you want to see Ugh. how much music can change the scene, watch the original scene, uh, for talking about the original cut, and then watch that. And the music changes. So even though they still use the Wonder Woman theme a little bit, watch the different scenes. And the first one, the dun, 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 dun real quick. Yeah. And that one's got the... Ah, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Yeah. And it it's so different. Like Tarzan boy. Yeah. Okay, exactly. I'm referencing 90s music. Come on, y'all. It, but it does. It's. I'm telling you, there's such a difference between the fastness of the films. It's amazing. Ridiculously amazing, yep. actually. All right. Uh, but we really should wrap this yep. up. So... But that was our thoughts on it. And, you know, not saying I didn't no, like the movie, no, but there's plenty to criticize. Yet. This was not I, – I saw too many people that loved it, but I also saw some people that hated it. And I was like, well, I don't agree with the people that hate it. I don't agree with you that just love right it. I'm right in that middle where it's like, you know what? This was better than the original cut, and I did like it. I broke it up. I watched it in, you know, half-hour chunks throughout yeah, the day, yeah, yeah. you know, because I had other things I wanted to do. Uh, and I didn't want to have it for – and I, I felt better watching it as a se- – I think it would have been a great miniseries. Yeah. But those are our thoughts, and we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for listening to this week's episode of Neverland to Disney and Beyond. And of course, I want to remind you to keep a pixie in your pocket. What do I mean by that? Well, that is that young at heart, positive thoughts that you're going to keep in your pocket and share it with other people. Pull out that pixie dust and share it. Make sure, of course, that you check our show notes right there in whatever app you're listening to. There's a way to find the show notes. Now, I don't know what app you're listening to, so I can't tell you the specifics, but go and check it out. Also, visit our website, NeverlandPodcast.com. Make sure that you leave us a nice review on whatever you're listening to, be it Apple or Google or Stitcher or just about anywhere. Leave us a nice review, and we appreciate that. And also, make sure you share the show with others because we like to bring other people into our community. And, of course... Make sure you visit our Patreon page, patreon.com slash neverlandpodcast. We appreciate all of your help to keeping the magic alive here in Neverland. And, of course, if you're looking for a bit more fun, go search for us on YouTube, Neverland to Disney and Beyond. Until next week, like I said, keep a pixie in your pocket. Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why! Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. Breast milk science. It's a thing. And it's our thing. We're Byheart. We're an infant formula company on a mission to get a lot closer to the most super, super food on the planet, breast milk. Our patented protein blend has more of the important and most abundant proteins found in breast milk. We're the first and only U.S.-made formula to use organic, grass-fed whole milk, not skim. We make our formula in our own factories in Iowa, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. 
using a small batch manufacturing process that works to preserve the integrity of our ingredients. We ran the largest clinical trial by a new infant formula company in 25 years and clinically proved benefits like easier digestion, less gas, and softer poops versus a leading infant formula. We were the first infant formula company to earn the Clean Label Project Purity Award. And while we've put a lot into Byheart, there's a long list of things you won't see on our ingredient list, like no corn syrup, no maltodextrin, no GMO ingredients, no soy, no palm oil. Byheart, a better formula for formula. Learn more at byheart.com.